has been a huge decline in mental health around the world, which is why we're so committed to creating more content than we ever have. Stay tuned and thanks for being a part of our journey. It's been drilled into our heads repeatedly, whether it be by friends, movies, or other media. Family is the most precious treasure, but what if there's someone who is outright toxic? How do you know? Perhaps you were surprised to learn that things that happened in your home were not what everyone else experienced. We understand that seeing and accepting someone as toxic can be difficult when it comes to family. So let's look at some signs that can reveal the toxicity. Number one, they constantly overstep your boundaries and privacy. Have you told a family member about your boundaries? That there are some things that you are just not okay with, no matter how they spin it? Do they then ignore you and do it anyhow? It could be anything from teasing you about your weight to making you live their dreams for them. They just repeatedly stomp over the line like it doesn't exist. They may even try to say things like, this is good for you, or that you should learn to accept what they're doing, despite evidence to the contrary. This is toxic behavior. It's disrespectful to you as an individual and no matter how they spin it, this is not healthy and you aren't obligated to take it. Number two, they always demand something from you. My way or the highway is the prevailing attitude with this toxic family member. There's no bend or compromise unless it's you doing the bending. No matter how much you do, it's never enough. There's always something more. The asks are so frequent that eventually you start to lose the ability to step back and gauge the situation. They keep demanding and nitpicking far beyond what is reasonable or considerate. And should you bring up your own needs, you're likely to be shamed or guilted for daring to think of yourself and your own well-being. We'll tell you something here. You're not selfish for wanting to live your own life and you're not a bad person for assessing the situation. That kind of constantly demanding dynamic is unhealthy and not the norm. Number three, they don't recognize your achievements. Hey, you got that certificate. Sweet, you got second in an international competition. You got the job you wanted. You're proud of yourself because this wasn't just a participate and watch thing. You didn't cheat. You're not asking for a prize for eating a healthy salad. It's something significant. But did all those achievements just get shoved in a back closet, never to be mentioned again? Or maybe they are mentioned, but only in terms of how you fell short. Why didn't you get first place? You have every right to feel unappreciated and unacknowledged. Don't let them tell you that you're overreacting or that you're being conceited. This is a terrible and unhealthy behavior that they may say serves to keep you humble but really it's just a way of keeping your self-confidence low, allowing them to continue feeling superior and in control. Number four, all of your problems are ignored, called attention seeking or sad excuses. The scene, you approach a family member about how you're overworked, showing signs of burnout and need a break, or you find that the grief you're experiencing from a loss is extra difficult. So you need to postpone doing that favor for the family member. Did you just get nervous? fearful or maybe feel hopeless? Did your mind immediately start resisting saying, no, I can't do that? Why? Maybe you know they'll just shrug it off with a yeah, yeah, what else is new? Or roll their eyes and pretend not to hear you. Perhaps you're anticipating being scolded for being a spoiled bratty attention seeker or a lazy good for nothing. It might be followed up with a bitter chaser of, I went through this and didn't need a break just to make you feel that much more inadequate. Disregarding your feelings and your individual right to your emotional response is toxic and not right. Attention, love, and reassurance during downtimes is a basic need, not a flighty request. Their inability or unwillingness says a lot about them and not a bad reflection on you. Number five, you are at fault for everything. Is everything you say or do taken negatively? Are even your most compassionate actions twisted into something ugly? Have you found yourself being blamed for impossible things? Oh uh, yeah, that's bad poison. And no, you shouldn't be treated this way, nor is it a normal part of family life. Catch this sign by taking a small step back. Trust your mind and ask yourself things like, could this truly possibly be directly my fault? Is what I did really that awful? You aren't obligated to be a dumping ground scapegoat for their issues. So yeah, 90% on that test is a great score. And no, you're not at fault that a family member forgot their own lunch. The constant blaming and criticizing can have you build up resentment and anger if you feel trapped, being expected to accept this. Know that this toxic behavior is not something expected to be a part of life and you have every right to let it and them go. Number six, 
gaslighting. This term has been around long enough now that any search with just this word will bring up a whole lot of hits. How do you catch it happening? Take note if you sense they lie to you a lot. One or two times of, no, you owe me a coffee, remember? Can really just be a mistake, but if everything you know is make-believe according to them and memories concerning them seem to be almost completely revised, good chance they're gaslighting you. They're trying to ensure you don't trust yourself. The low confidence ensuring you'll never do better than them and they'll never have to take accountability for their own shortcomings. Needless to say, not normal, not healthy and very abusive. Did these signs bring new meaning to anything you might've experienced? Have you seen this happen to others? How are you handling it? Feel free to discuss, give us a like and we'll see you soon.